From bird poop facials to crocodile dung baths, it's safe to say that ancient beauty rituals were often, well, not super safe and, let's be real, pretty gross. With evidence of cosmetics in use since 4000 BCE, there's no doubt the modern cosmetic industry, a $430 billion business and counting, has made strides when it comes to safety and sustainability. However, a few modern cosmetic ingredients forgot to leave the icky part behind. I'm talking about everything from crushed insects to slimy secretions. So brace yourselves, because in this video, I'm going to share six of the grossest, weirdest, and spookiest ingredients used in beauty products, past and present. We'll be delving into why on earth they were used, if we still use them today, or if they're relics of the past. I for one was kind of surprised to learn that ingredient number three can not only be found in modern cosmetics, but also in some dairy products and desserts. So without further ado, let's get into our first ingredient. This unassuming lump is prized in perfumery for its uniquely sweet, earthy aroma. This stuff is so rare and valuable that it has long been referred to as floating gold. Higher qualities sell for approximately $27 for just one gram. That all sounds pretty harmless so far, right? Yeah, up until you realize where it comes from. This is ambergris, and it's produced in the digestive system of sperm whales, protecting their internal organs from the indigestible elements of their dinner, like stabby squid beaks and teeth. Ow. Fossilized evidence of ambergris dates back 1.75 million years, with the first evidence of its use in fine perfumery said to have been in the 10th century by the Arabs in Spain. Fun fact, historically it was also used in food and drink, with Louis XV of France rumored to have spiced his favorite dishes with ambergris. Unsurprisingly, this not-so-appetizing ingredient is disappearing from the world market due to overhunting of the sperm whale and the fact that it's illegal in several countries. One of my favorite resinoids, labdanum, is a popular alternative, along with synthetic and essential oil-derived options. This next ingredient is a bit newer. It's known for its moisturizing, skin-renewing properties and can be found in hundreds of products for sale today. That's right, it's snail mucin. Boasting soothing allantoin and brightening glycolic acid, this secretion filtrate is obtained from, yep, you guessed it, gloopy snail slime. <laughs> It was first used by the ancient Greeks to reduce inflammation following the advice of Greek physician Hippocrates. These days, this ingredient has experienced a resurgence in popularity ever since Chilean snail breeders noticed the ingredient's skin softening effects in the 1980s. And then in the 2000s, it became a feature of many Korean skincare products, which have since soared in popularity. Take CauseRx's cult favorite snail mucin essence, for example, which has over 9,000 five-star reviews on Amazon. If you'd like to try formulating with snail mucin yourself, Formulator Sample Shop sells it. They recommend including it at 1-10% to in serums and toners. If you'd like a vegan alternative, you might instead choose hyaluronic acid, aloe vera, or a plant-based snail mucin alternative like phytomucin, which is made from wild yams. Now, before we talk about an ingredient derived from the glands of my homeland's favorite furry rodent, let's move on to our third ingredient, first used as early as 700 BC by South American civilizations and Aztecs to dye textiles. Take a look at this incredible color. This red pigment is called carmine, and it's made from none other than crushed female cochineal insects. Boiled in ammonia or a sodium carbonate solution, the solution is then mixed with alum to create a vibrant red dye. <laughs> as ick as that is, it is gorgeous, so I wasn't surprised to discover that carmine was favored among renowned painters such as Vincent van Gogh for its vibrant red hue. More than a century later, this buggy dye is still found in some cosmetics. I've used it myself to create some beautiful, but definitely not vegan-friendly, lipsticks, glosses, and stains. It doesn't take much at all to pack a powerfully colorful punch. Just 1% will make a product really pink. 
Having said this, the rising popularity of vegan products means that today, carmine is used less and less in favor of synthetic dyes like DNC Red 6, 7, and 30. Our fourth contender is favored for its scent and has been used in perfumes for its leathery notes and in dessert flavorings since the early 20th century. Meet Castorium and get ready to be grossed out because I think this is the worst one yet. This yellowish secretion is extracted from the castor sacs of beavers used to scent mark their territory. In other words, beaver butt goo. Even worse, in perfumery, the extracts are typically aged for two or more years to mellow, making it, dread the thought, old beaver butt goo. As you're scanning your ingredient lists looking for castorium, don't be frightened by the similar sounding castor oil. Castor oil is pressed from the castor bean, and while it has its own icky bits in the history books, it's completely vegan and a safe cosmetic ingredient. In fact, you don't really have to worry about finding castorium in any modern cosmetics, as the worldwide fund for nature has banned the use of castorium, with only a few labels continuing to use this product, with substitutes spanning everything from blends of essential oils and essential oil constituents to synthetic replicas. This next ingredient is our list's only synthetic nominee. It may not sound familiar, but it's used in all sorts of cosmetic products as a slip booster and an anti-foaming agent, hence the nickname anti-foam. This viscous liquid, known as cymethicone, has been in use since the 1940s and is found in everything from foundation to mascara to eyeliner. There's nothing particularly gross about cymethicone on its own, but it does keep some rather strange and smelly company. Get this. It's also used to treat flatulence, as its anti-foam properties also help reduce the surface tension of air or gas bubbles in your guts. So yeah, this anti-fart wonder worker also helps your eyeliner glide on more elegantly. <laughs> Weird or what? Have a guess at our final ingredient, which was used to solidify balms and salves much like we use beeswax today. It was widely used in cosmetics and candles during the 18th and 19th centuries due to its stability and pleasant scent. If you guessed spermaceti, you'd be right. Though it sort of sounds like a type of pasta, this pearly substance was actually harvested from the head cavities of sperm whales. The sperm whale's spermaceti organ can contain as much as an astonishing 1900 liters of this whale wax. You'll be relieved to hear that nowadays, due to conservation efforts and the 1987 international ban on whaling, spermaceti has been replaced with synthetic and plant-based alternatives like palm-derived cetyl palmitate. And there you have it, brave souls. While it's fun to poke a bit of fun at yucky cosmetic ingredients, it's important to note that the world of cosmetics has definitely come a long way from the days of whale digestive leftovers. Animal-derived ingredients are mostly on their way out, in large part due to the rising popularity of vegan products and the availability of more affordable, plant-derived and synthetic alternatives. This means we can all enjoy skincare and cosmetics that are safer, kinder, and most importantly, free of old beaver butt goo. Remember how I said spermaceti was used for all sorts of balms and salves? If you would like to make your very own lip balm that contains 0% whale, I've got a free beginner-friendly recipe for a gorgeous Burt's Bees-inspired lip balm right here. So check that out next.